everybody, I'm here with Kevin Creekman, sometimes called Kevin the Kick-Ass Creekman. We'll get into that later. Um, you have a hell of a story, and uh, I think it's just best if you jump into how you got to be this amazing guy. And he's the reason there are no girls left in Hollywood. So if you're flying on a plane to L.A., just you turn it because there's no shot with him there. Take over, my man. Tell us, tell us uh, what happened. Yeah, thanks a lot for this introduction. Um, I was like obese or like overweight, like most of my life throughout my um, childhood through my adolescence. And when I was 18 years old, there was at this point in life where I figured out, okay, I'm this obese guy. I like, I got bullied a lot. I never had a girlfriend. Had like no social experience like at all. Um, that were kind of relevant at this age, you know, and I figured out, okay, I'm 18 years old, I'm finished school, I'm self-responsible, I'm going to my new stage of life, of going to university, of studying and stuff, and I was like, no, it's, I don't want to carry my past through all my other instances of life, and now is the time to change that, and um, yeah, I was 350 pounds back then, and um, I lost like, not sure about like, I'm almost like, bad with pounds and kilograms because I'm from Germany, sure. the system. and I uh, feel like it was like, oh my god, I should know the numbers, but it was like 150 or almost 200 pounds that I lost like in one year. Wow, and, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, I became from like a very, very obese kind of guy to a very skinny guy back then, and my whole journey of like self-developing or like finding myself really started there, so like, like every year and like every step and it after was like really like trying to be the person I am now to, to be able to look like who I want to be but also like feel like the person I want to be but after my, my varied loss I had like a lot of issues with like loose skin so um so I didn't like myself I was very obese then I was very skinny I couldn't like myself and always when I would I never took off my shirt because I was like ashamed of how my skin looked like and then there was like the point like it took me many 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 years to um um, to go for this step because also it cost like a lot of money. So I think it was 26 years old. So it took me like seven years from when I was skinny um, to the point where I said like, okay, I need to get those surgeries done to remove my skin. And yeah, I had those skin removal surgeries. And um, and then I was at this point, I had like those huge scars on my body um, that I also didn't like. So I was still at the point I lost all my weight. I was skinny. I did the surgeries and I still didn't feel free in my skin. Whenever I took off my shirt, people were like, hey, what's going on with you? And I don't want to explain to everyone my whole backstory. I wanted to be yeah. like, my skin to just feel like, yeah, people accept me like I am. And I just want to be this new kind of person. Mm -hmm. So um, so at this point in life, I had already like a lot tattoos before. So I think it was 23 years old when I had like my two full sleeve tattoos. But it was goes like hand in hand to the other. So this was like my chance to just expand my tattoos that I had already in my body to kind of cover my scars and just go into life as a complete new person, like where no one could ever imagine that I had this backstory that I actually have. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like at this point, I was at this point in life to take off my shirt and feel free in my skin because no one came to me and said like, hey, what's going on with you? Tell me why you're looking like that. And I didn't have mm -hmm. to explain myself anymore. Right. And yeah, this was also like the time when I, when I was on social media. So I was at this point in life to really feel free my skin, to go out there and show myself. And um, yeah, funny thing, it kind of worked out that much that I'm now like, yeah, my appearance is like my business kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're like a real superhero. Everyone I know um, that knew you were coming on wanted to find out how did you lose the weight? Because everybody struggles with weight, but what you did is is monumental. I mean, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so there's basically no trick. So what I figured out, um, I didn't do even sports. It's like where I have to start. So right now I do like a lot of sports, a lot of gym. So it's like my secret addiction, like being almost every day at the gym. But back then I literally like um, didn't do any sports or stuff. I was just um, restructuring my whole nutrition to like a very... I mean, it sounds also cheesy, like this this low carb thing and low low calorie thing. But this is like the essence, like of what I can tell. Like calories are, it's all about calories. It's all about what you eat. So if you eat more than your body needs, you're getting fat. If you eat less than your body needs, you get skinnier or lose weight. And this is like, um, yeah, really, what's what the whole trick is about? Like Actually. counting calories. When did the weight training come in? Because you said at first it was just dieting only and no sports. Mm. When did the gym take place and the addiction um, to that? 
so my intention with weight training was basically really like um was my loose skin was motivating me so i was like 19 years old i was super skinny it was like seven, 72 kilos which is probably like around i'm not sure one oh my god i hate this uh maybe 170 160 pounds or something mm -hmm. so i was from i'm not over i'm six three tall so i was very wow skinny. and um had all those hanging skin and i was like okay maybe i should do weight training to like bring more volume to my body to to kind of stretch my skin again and obviously it didn't work on like parts like the belly because you don't get like weight yeah. gains on your belly that kind of stretch out the loose skin that has so this was my motivation start like hey work on your body like see like how your skin uh, can improve and mm -hmm. also this became an addiction because like with every success and every step you had like you know your biceps getting bigger your body looks basically better so why mm -hmm. not going further and not giving up at this point you know my more plates, bigger numbers, putting up the weight. Yeah, um, I, I lived in LA for a little while and I used to go to Gold's and I'd see Arnold there and everything and uh, or on Venice Beach. It's, it is it is an addiction, I mean, once you get it going. Uh, but what you did is just uh, spectacular. Now, how was it for the reaction? You were saying you looked a certain way when you were younger and then all of a sudden now, you know, I mean, clearly I'm looking at one of those Hollywood guys that lived in LA three times you're the kind of guy that everybody goes nuts for. And not only that, we'll talk later, Hollywood is putting you in, in movies. How was it watching, how was it experiencing the transition of, hey, I looked a certain way and I didn't get the proper attention or the nice attention, and now people are throwing their underwear at me? Um, I think like with like the backstory I have, it makes things like way more appreciatable because mm -hmm. like, it's, I feel like my life is very ironic of seeing like really like being this bully person like I, I got disgraced had like just heavy words that people were throwing at me because of my appearance and now I'm getting like the totally opposite back through because of my appearance so it's like it's like really like jumping between two worlds and like it makes me so much more appreciate what I have right now and it's it's fun. <laughs> well, you you deserve it. I mean, you you earned it with uh, what you did. That's that's exceptional. Now that you're acting, did you ever see yourself acting once you became what you wanted to be and you had the appearance? Did you say, "Hey, acting, I think I'm coming for you"? Um, so acting was like just like a thing. Like, um, so when I moved to LA, it was just about I wanted to expand. Um, well, I, I'm, I want to go to LA to just find out what's out there in my media in the media industry. So is it is it modeling? Is it music? Is it like acting? Whatever. And I feel like um, if you have read like brought like this level on social media, it was just for me like the next step to to figure out like where's your potential out there. And I feel like acting is like just such a big thing here in LA. I love movies. I love acting, especially like I love to see the results. And it's just like, yeah, I want to go for this. I want to see what potential is out there for me. Well, it seems uh, the potential is already knocked on your door. Um, a movie's coming out, not coming out, a movie in, what is it, 2021, they're going to start. You're already cast amongst a, a bunch of great people, Danny Trejo. Mm -hmm. There's a whole list here. I don't want to miss some of these people. Um, Brian Austin Greer, Vinnie Jones, Richard Grieco, 21 Jump Street, love that guy. Eric Roberts, one of the best actors in Hollywood. Michael Clark Duncan, Wow. You, you got a lot of really heavy hitters in this thing. See Thomas Howell. Um, tell us about that, what you can tell us, and how they find you. Um, so the thing is like, um, I was like, this, this story behind this movie is also, um, it came like through my PR, and my PR agent connected me with like um, the director, Patrick Durham. And um, it's like it's cross wars like the four the fourth movie of like the cross wars series like a franchise movie it's like a kind of funny very playful action movie with most characters and uh, more like a yeah like a group of bad guys and good guys kind of fighting each other in like an action kind of scenario and how i got into this role i have to say it's also like probably because um i don't have many acting references out there i didn't have like any crazy auditions or something where i had like to fight with many people but it was really like um the director appreciated my persona my backstory and i was like i want to have this person in the cast so i feel like also like there my yeah my backstory like reached basically the hand like to to like something like that and i i'm very grateful that that i got opportunity because of that wow 
and and the appearance helps a lot too. I mean, that's going to put if there are movie theater seats, it'll put people in the seats. If not, it'll put them in front of whatever they're watching it on because uh, you you have quite a, a, a rapid fan base. Um, so the PR person was that Raquel who yeah. did that. We yeah. love you, Raquel. You made this interview happen. Thank you, Raquel. Thank also you. made this guy happen. Um, also, there was some modeling stuff I, I saw. Um, is modeling interesting to you now that you've gotten into acting where it's appearance, but you actually, you know, you have emotion, you have line, you have interaction. Is modeling still something that appeals to you? Um, I feel like modeling is like almost like the core how my um, how my career was kind of driven. So when I started to be on Instagram, like before I, I developed my own kind of brand and like how I how I do my pictures and stuff, I was like basically working with a lot of photographers to just promote content on on Instagram. So I need like people who work with me. So I was always like working like with professional photographers, but also like had like little model gigs. They were like always there throughout throughout my career and they still are. And I feel like it's just like the core of my social media, which is like picture based and basically modeling, you know? Yeah. Oh, I see all those shots. I mean, they're, they're killer shots. Like now I'm out. I, I'm like really afraid of sharks. Okay. Cause we were I, getting I, your fears. Really, sharks. Uh, huh? If I got to go like kind, kind, kind of, kind of, kind of cage like with like big white sharks, it would probably freak out. I appreciate those animals; they're beautiful animals, but they scare the shit out of me. <laughs> me too. Me too. Now you'll wind up doing like point, uh, point break three, and you'll have to be a surfer guy out in the ocean for six weeks. Uh, well, if they cast you, you got to go. Is it crazy with girls just coming around and autographs and phone numbers and stuff? Be honest, because we already know the answer. But the funny thing is like. Um, Funny things like I, I don't know why, but I'm I usually feel like I'm very blind when I'm out there because I feel like, in 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 big social kind of construction, I'm still like so focused on myself because I'm like, I don't know. It's like I never was really very comfortable with like a lot of people because of, because of my past fear just just carry this around and I feel like I'm so like, like uh, in, like introspect with myself, like how I am around people that I usually don't see what people are almost doing. So like. Um, I was like, when I'm with friends, or they're like, hey, this person's staring at you, or those people, did you see like these person were staring at you and stuff, or like, hey, maybe this person recognized you, it's like, I barely see that, it's kind of weird. You're, you're still so humble, you're still so humble. Do you remember the first time you were recognized, like, I know you, dude, you, you're, you're the creek man? Mm, very first time. Um, funny thing is that like, I think when I was playing music I was like there was like the first little moments where I was like I was just locally playing in like in like rock metal band they had like a, like some moments and I feel like of course it started writing Germany when I was living in Germany um that I had certain moments on the street where people like hey I was following I'm following you on Instagram I like your Instagram content and stuff um it happens all like every couple I would say days weeks where you have like just one person that you're coming up to you but usually people are very quiet and they're like more um sliding to your games and hey i've seen you there you know. if you could just say something um inspiring for people who see this like that are being bullied because it's such a big thing or people who are you know body shamed or whatever uh because being young is horrible and now with social media it's not even you leave the school it's over it's still going on 24 hours a day just mm. any words of like hey things get better or you can do it mm. i think um what I usually like to say, because like people often ask me in the DMs, like what 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 gave me the motivation, what drives me to to drag me out of like a very dark place and stuff. And um, what I usually always try to say is like, and um, that usually I say our biggest weakness is our biggest strength, kind of thing. And um, I feel like if the person has always like average good kind of life and stuff. They usually stay in this comfort zone and like do their life blah, blah. but i feel like because i was dragged so down in my point of life and i've had in such a dark place i just didn't want to grow like where people are i just wanted to be like higher than everyone else mm -hmm. kind of so this was like my motivation so now it's your time to really show like what you can do and i feel like every person who's like in this dark place they should use like this this really emotional kind of dark place to really like figure out okay i want to show those people that i'm like I can be whatever I want and I, I'm going to show those people that I'm not like there, that they, I'm going to be like there, you know? And, I like that. And I think this is like very strength. If you're like, have like this, this dark emotion that you we should use it or canalize it to something that is like just way bigger because we have like, we can use it for, for our drive to have this drive to, hey, I want to change something because we have good merit to change.
So you got the, the movie that you're going to be working on. You're doing nonstop modeling gigs, interviewed nonstop. Um, are you doing any like training for acting now that you have something coming out or is it you're so comfortable? It's not a problem. Um, so like the whole acting process right now, like very developing, like in, its, in like very basic things. So I have like now like some, some, some new um, management like companies I was working, I'm working with. Like we try to figure out new acting schools right now. I had like a acting school um, back before COVID. Um, right now, of course, I have to figure out how I do like everything virtually. Um, so it's like something I really try to put, put my really my main main focus on right now. Perfect, perfect. I, and I'm sure you, uh, with uh, um, commercials, they must be coming after you, or as soon as you approach that, it's going to go crazy with commercials. But I know you have product uh, affiliations on the site as well. If, if you want to talk about them or say something, because they always appreciate a shout out. Um, yeah, I have like I would say right now. Um, three main sponsors um that i'm very grateful for because like during COVID and stuff i feel like uh while as many people like have really like to struggle like to find like jobs in like every kind of business i i can just say i'm very grateful having like sponsors that are paying me through social media still you know and yeah i'm working like with uh, three brands um right now it's like ones like con air I think you guys know Connor hair hair dryers. Oh sure, like everything they're doing. But like with Connor Man, they're doing like um, beard trimmers. That I'm also really using for the last two years. I'm working with them to do all my stuff by myself, and they um, gonna release um, they release a product very soon at Target with my face on the box. So it's pretty no, cool. my man, <laughs> the creep yeah, man. They, they bring out like like three three. Uh, I think a beard trimmer, like a hair trimmer, and also like a nose hair trimmer, and they. Decided to put me on the box where I feel like, oh my god, that's so cool. So that is really cool. And um, then if we are still like with with beers, like have like a, like a very new sponsor, but which I like really appreciate. It's like the Beard Struggle. It's like a Canadian brand that is like based their whole um, beard grooming products on a kind of Viking kind of marketing, uh, which I think fits very well. And it's a very cool brand, so mm -hmm. you should check it out. And if you look for beard oils and everything that's beard care. Yeah. And then the last thing I did like a collaboration with a very good friend of mine, um, George Mario John, or also known as Bisoiki on, on, on Instagram. He was one of my very big icons when I started to post on Instagram, like he was like one of my big icons. And it's funny after so many years that he was like, we were talking on eye level, say, Hey, let's do like collaboration together. And he's, uh, he's doing leather jackets now. And he decided to put out or wanted to collaborate with me to bring out a signature leather jacket. So there's like um, a Creekman leather jacket um, that is available for all of you guys. And I think it looks pretty amazing. I'm going to have to get one of those. I don't look uh, the way you do with a beard, but I'll definitely hit the con air and the, the trimmer and stuff like that. I, I tried the, I can go scruff, but past that, it's, uh, it's not a good look. Um, uh, we'll put up all your social media. We'll put up all that stuff on the on the on the feature. Is there any last thing that you just want to say? A shout out to anyone, or a thank you, or you know, message? Um, I always like thanks to all my followers and all the people who support me to be where I am right now. So I'm very grateful. Thanks, guys. Cool. And the name of the movie we should look out for. So um, it's. The, the series is called Cross Wars, and it's now Cross Wars, Fear, uh, Cross Wars 4, sorry. And, but I'm not sure whether the franchise like changes the name to Cross Bones, I've heard, or something, or just Cross 4. So right now, it's like not very clear what's the final name. But yeah, it's like the fourth movie of the Cross Wars franchise. Ah, there'll be a big billboard of you on Sunset. They'll know what to look for. Hey, it's Kevin Creekman, and you're watching Chance TV.